welcome back. How did you do? I'm going to reveal some information about this document and we'll see how it compares to the ideas that you had. So I think we can be fairly confident that this is an image of a king. There are several things that help us work that out, aren't there? He's wearing a crown, he's seated on the throne. He's also holding those symbols of royal power, the orb and the scepter. The orb represents the globe, it's a sphere, and it has a cross on the top, which is a symbol of Christianity. He's also holding that pole or the scepter, that represents the king's power. But which king is it though? There are a few clues. For example, the large rose on the top. It looks very much like the Tudor rose, although you might be more used to seeing it in red and white. Now, there are three male Tudor kings, Henry VII, Henry VIII, and Edward VI. Which one is shown here? If you look very closely at the writing above his head, it tells us that it's in Latin. If you look closely, it says Henricus Octavus. Does that give you a clue? You worked it out? You might be quite surprised that this is actually Henry VIII because he looks very different to images you might be more used to seeing of him. He's very young in this image. He's only 25. So this document is over 500 years old. It comes from 1517. Remember I pointed out the spotted trim on his cloak. It was made from a very expensive fur from a small animal called an ermine or a stoat. You'll see it in lots of portraits of monarchs as it's a symbol of wealth. Looking at the tree, the birds and the bearded figure, there are various ideas about what these are and what they represent. The birds could be phoenixes which represent rebirth and the continuation of the Tudor dynasty. The bearded figure could be a green man who represents rebirth. The tree could just be for decoration or representing Henry's rule extending over the natural world. What do you think? We've discovered a lot about this document, haven't we? So finally, I wonder, did you have any ideas about what type of document it is? What could it be used for? It looks pretty important. It must have taken somebody a long time to do. It's probably not just the shopping list, which meant it was meant to be kept and not just thrown away after it had been used. Remember that bumpy surface? Well, this document is made out of a material called parchment, which is made out of sheepskin. It's treated to become thinner and smoother so it can be written on. It's a very durable material, which lasts much longer than modern paper. Do you know what that's made out of? It can be really fragile. Now, you may have noticed the document code at the bottom of the image. All of our documents have a code and that gives us a clue about where it comes from. It starts with KB, which stands for King's Bench, which was the most senior criminal court in England. It's actually the front page or cover of a much larger document called a plea roll. The tree is actually in the shape of a plea. Each plea roll contains lots of cases that were brought before the King's Bench. The numbers next to KB represent the series. We have many more of these from King Henry VIII's reign and from other monarchs. The King himself was not always there in person, but this image of him perhaps shows that he's overseeing proceedings at all times. The image of Henry represents all those important points of him being a king, in power, in control and chosen by God. Remember at this time, a key way for a monarch to represent his image was through paintings. There were no photographs, no TV, no film or the internet. So these painted images were very important in representing King Henry and his qualities to his people. Well, you've done some fantastic historical investigations today and we've learned a huge amount about this document. You've practiced skills of gathering evidence by looking closely at a document and then asking questions and trying to answer them using this evidence. I've really enjoyed exploring this beautiful document together with you. I hope you've enjoyed it too. If this has inspired you to find out more about Henry VIII, there are more activities on the same web page as this video. You can continue your investigation of Henry VIII by exploring two more documents, get crafty with one of our creative activities, Extend your learning further by completing more Henry VIII themed activities on our website and beyond. 
We'd love to see how you get on. So please share your work with us via email or Twitter. So that's all from me today. I hope to see you again for another History Mystery on Time Travel TV. Bye bye for now. <laughs>